It still sounds like what we know Euphoria to be, but we were evolving the sound of the show. We have 37 songs in the first episode alone. I think it's like so important for people to have good music and shows. They got that covered. Music is such a central character to the show. It's so important to Sam. It really helps express everything that Sam wants the audience to feel. Musically, across the board, I've been very influenced by sort of a wide array of genres. And I think one of the things that was important to me this season is that we kind of get away from this feeling that everything needs to be current and of now. Whenever I write, I, I sort of write in music cues and how I sort of see a scene. It becomes exciting to have a narrative that's so strange and nutty that it, that it allows for all of this different music. They're also just such great songs. And darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Being able to, to use everything from Jerry Rafferty. I know how much I lean on you. To hit him up. Just creates this interesting tapestry. This season, we did use a lot of catalog, vintage, old school hip hop. And then each episode had its own sound and vibe and used music a little bit differently. All fails and mistakes. The first inkling of an idea about Cal's backstory came from Marcel and I just hanging around after season one wrapped, listening to music. He brought up Mystified by In Excess, and that's what clicked off that whole narrative. We tend to think about things from a rhythmic standpoint in terms of how it's shot and how the story's told. It became the backbone of that whole sequence. Sam scripted in in excess. He had several spots where both young Cal was listening to it, and then when older Cal was kind of in his really bad state. Wear a seatbelt. <laughs> okay, Dad. <laughs> we were able to use that as a blueprint and a starting point of what Cal's soundtrack was going to sound like. And then we just had so much fun using that inspiration to use a lot of the late 80s, early 90s, new wave type music. What's amazing about this show is that there is so much creative freedom that we don't have to stick to one genre. Playing with so many different vibes and songs for when Maddie goes into the closet and then landing on a Judy Garland song. Come rain or come shine, I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you. You can really find inspiration on how how do we want to juxtapose this? Do we want to have like Rue being super fucked up and then doing Call Me Irresponsible? Go on and call me unpredictable. Tell me that I'm impractical. Rainbows I'm inclined to pursue. Are you high? Oh, fuck me. That 
scene is fantasy mixed with reality, and there's pain, and there's darkness, but there's also humor. And it just became a, a slightly humorous, very disturbing way of showing how drugs have this ability to kind of change the way in which you think. The music can do so many different things emotionally. It can totally complicate a scene or do a bit of a counterpoint where a scene that has a certain amount of gravity ends up being sort of leavened and feels a little lighter because of the music or vice versa. We're also introducing these artists like Jerry Rafferty or In Excess or Bobby Darin to a whole new audience. And we're excited to open that door for our fans and maintain that element of discovery, not only for up and coming artists, but some of these classics.